Good morning. It's about 7, uh, 7.25. Thursday morning. All right, so uh, Q&A. A little bit of Q&A here. Addressing. Okay, first one is uh, Rich. Believe, do you believe something in greater than you, than yourself? Um, could be anything. And well, I used to. I was born in a cult, and I escaped from it at 22 years of age after one year of planning. And so I would say also that. Uh, Yes, the first, uh, the first, the first 10, 15, 16, the first 16, the first 15, 16 years of my life. Yeah, I was not a fanatical uh, Sky Ghost believer, but uh, you could say I was. Again, mind you, I, I was not argued at all by anybody in my childhood from zero onward till uh, about 15 years old. Uh, I wasn't argued into at all, not once, not even uh, well at all. I uh, wasn't argued into uh, being religious, being believing that skies ghosts and uh, and if you will, into something bigger than myself, some more, something more important than myself. Uh, so uh, yeah, tiny little cult, about fifteen hundred people only, spread out between uh, Montreal. Valtry in uh, Los Angeles uh, area of California and uh, yeah and about, about 20 yeah, 21 uh, 21 years old I started planning because I found uh, through direct, direct mail marketing I found through direct mail marketing advertising because I was the the bookworm of my family. <laughs> I have siblings. I have one slightly older s uh, sister. I'm the fourth kid of uh, four kids. So uh, five boys and one uh, one daughter, one girl rather. And I was the bookworm, the black swan, the black sheep, the gab, the Socrates. My family. Um, and was I ever annoyed? Annoying. Annoyed. I was annoyed and annoying massively to my parents, my sister, and my brother. So fuck do I. Was I ever. <laughs> With my intense, turbo, constant, almost 24 hours questioning of everything of fucking everything and when I say everything every, every fucking thing in my tiny little world back then uh, so yeah so I discovered uh, good enough well enough well argued enough uh, information well, this, is written, this is the written word this, this is 19 uh, what is it? Eh, tell end of 90, 1989. 89. Uh, yeah, and so. Uh, oh, if you want to know, it, it's called. Uh, it's from the INO Publishing Company. Neotech for sure. And other terms include Neotink. Incredible, incredible value, 
incredible writing, editors, writers, uh, scientists, businessmen that ran that uh, very successful. Not as nearly as successful I would, as I would have liked it to be in the internet age. They didn't adapt, transfer well enough, and also social, social media at all. I know they've been around, they've been around since uh, mid to late 70s. Frank R. Wallace and his son. Uh, and of course, these are pen names and not necessarily their real name, and Mark Hamilton and uh, uh, Frank S. Ward, and also uh, they have a, he has a daughter also. And, uh, yeah, it's really too bad. They're still around. They are online. They are on social media, but tiny, tiny, next to zero influence. Anyway, so, yeah. In October, I think October, October, October 11th, is that it? Anyway, October 1990, I escaped. I defooed, defooed. To use a term, useful term that uh, someone of you uh, came up with. First time I uh, heard that term, divorce of original family, yeah? something like that. Eh? So yeah, and and uh, yeah. So well, today, uh, uh, today, I don't know, I'm 52 years old. I escaped when I was 22. Uh, I am still very much, very much uh, a non-sky ghost believer, non-sky ghost, God believer, non-religious person. But more, more, more than ever, in some ways, in some ways, uh, I am much more, especially in the present last few years, political climate, the culture wars we're having here. Now, I am, of course, much more uh, understanding, sympathetic, empathetic, in some, in some ways, uh, with uh, those that are religious, specifically more those that are Christian, uh, uh, Jesus believers, and so on. But I want to make it very clear, only to a certain very, very hard line point. Okay. And that hard line point is very much uh, a contextual in modern times where, oh, it's been more, more than a decade now, oh yeah, easily, that uh, we need to tribe up tribe up to a certain extent, in certain ways, in certain contexts, for, for on many issues, uh, to just survive, to just fucking survive. Just to make clear also, uh, I'm not just an atheist, non uh, kind of believer, but I'm in a uh, non, I'm not a non-status atheist, um, not agnostic at all, non-status uh, AT is very much the opposite of uh, Richard Dawkins and, and so on. But uh, all the while, you know, very much pro uh, Richard Dawkins' uh, stance in the sense of, you know, uh, yes, theory of evolution is very much. Oh, oh, hold on, wait. All right, yeah, 10 minute timer here. Yeah, we'll make this a little bit longer, eh? Or maybe a lot longer, eh? Depending how, if I feel like it. If I, depending on how much I have to say here, this great, 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 sunny, beautiful, cloudless, sunny morning. Uh, yeah, no, very much a pro theory of evolution. And yeah, you can nitpick that, yeah, you can pick all if you want. Uh, and, but uh, the exceptions doesn't break the rule, the general theory, it's good enough. Just like the theory of gravity is not perfect, so like basically nothing is perfect. Nothing that that uh, is concerns uh, the well-being of human behavior and stuff like that. And, and that applies should apply to human behavior. Human concerns is perfect and never will be. That's 
what I think. Uh, yeah, so. And um, I like, you know, I, I like a lot of uh, Christians and Catholics and Jesus believers and stuff like that in this highly, highly politicized society we are in. Today we're, we're basically nothing in this fucked up society. Oh, oh. There's nothing that is not politicized. Be it everything from the nature of man and woman, or the definition of man and a woman, definition of genders, Whether uh, the discovery of uh, mathematics, uh, gravity itself, and, and uh, basically all 97% plus of all other discoveries, advancement, architecture, mathematics, science, uh, products and services uh, that really, really advance us. Uh, human civilization for the past 500 years, which were all, by the way, done, made, invented, carried out by white men. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, the, uh, I do understand, but I reject and, and dismiss with a big LOL. Uh, a lot of the. Uh, religious people, Christian, that are, uh, they project, I, I, they're not just worried personally, there's much more to it, there's, uh, they project their worriness, the concern t to the point where they want, deeply desire others that are not as religious or are relig or religious at all, to, to start worrying to be as worried and concerns about the end of times and the uh, disintegration of society and so on and so on. Uh, ah, railroad cross crossing here. All right. But my goodness, it's a beautiful morning. I barely a wind, barely a breeze. Uh, so they, they uh, massively Worry, worry for, for the non-believers that are, even the ones that are very supportive of them and are ready to fight uh, by proxy also for many Christian people against uh, being locked up, censored, and destroyed by the far, the left and the far left, and so on and so on. So I think that is uh, quite a bit overdone. It's, it is to their detriment. But, uh, yeah, you know, but, uh, well, that being said, you know, the better ones know when to quit and just concentrate on their own personal lives. Family, extended family, and their own little tribe and community, and just let it be. Uh, but not. Not all to the point of uh, not all the way, all the way to the point of you know live and let live. No, 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 no. You know, I do appreciate, and they should be uh, concerned at least a little bit. You know, uh, because that's that uh, that requires some self-awareness. It certainly we have self uh, self-awareness, and to have it it requires a minimum self a degree of self-awareness. Uh, to actually be able to gauge and process one's immediate and extended social, social political happenings and developments, and uh, for good or bad, right? And so this minimal. Ah, uh, we're gonna go back. So this minimal, uh, you know, self-awareness and concern and worry, if you will, of those that are not. Religious, not the kind, not exactly, uh, not participating, not 
in their community, not going to church, their church, and stuff like that. Yeah, of course, it's good. Just like the the the, other, the flip side is is true too, and and sh and we we non-believers should also have minimal sense of uh, empathy and sympathy and understanding, right? Because they are very much similar value. Uh, value based when it comes to uh, uh, you know uh, fighting pushing against resisting surviving long term working to survive long term uh, despite and in spite of the uh, regardless of the uh, how much the left the far left wants to destroy us and uh, de bank de platform de job de career de uh, deep deep or on business uh, uh, our uh, the whole universe so there's that but uh, I'll tell you one right, right now though I am dead set I am absolutely dead set I'm not being becoming a religious again unlike very well-known people out there Milo Yiannopoulos uh, what's, the other guy? what's the other one Rouge Rouge, Rouge, was R R O O S H? I don't know if he has the last name there. I don't know. I know it by by heart. And so these guys really completely flipped out, you know. And for whatever exactly or combination of reasons, they they're their own. They I hope they own it completely also, and that's their prerogative. That's their business. That's the, and of course I hope they are cognizant of being fully aware of that or and those choices that that they're made that they, they made and the implication or everything that comes with that you know and so on and so on and same here they're rich here in the house beautiful uh was it Thursday morning uh, yeah and and for those that wonder you know how which how do you grapple, or do you grapple at all with you know the, the big questions that that uh, you know Christians, uh, the big the big questions and answers that are uh, uh, asked and already answered in uh, you know in in our uh, religion of uh, Christianity you know it's, they're asked and they're answered in our books, in the the Bible and by Jesus and so on. It's it's already made for us work to do so you know we have it easy here but I don't know, how do you go about I don't know, it's just like that. well one of the many uh, answers I have to, to this is one of the primary ones is is uh, comes from man man-made here hmm. from consciousness from our consciousness and I point you directly to a man a white man, Just, uh, probably dead by now, probably dead for sure. He wrote a book, okay, in 1976, okay, and he was a professor at Princeton University in New Jersey, I think, okay, right, in the United States. And he wrote a book called "The Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind." Also, did it have also the origin of consciousness? The origin, no, sorry, the, uh, the, the discovery of consciousness, something like that. But I, I do remember it absolutely had uh, those words in the title of the book, uh, which are the breakdown, uh, sorry, the, the discovery or and or the origin of human consciousness in the breakdown of the bicameral mind. You know, if, if you know a little bit about, you know, uh, brain, brain anatomy structure and neurology uh, structure and so on, it, you know, we have the right and left brain uh, part of our brain. You know, one side, I forget which one, it is right, exactly a, um, left or right, not this one. One half of our brain, no, no, that is uh, that processes the focus is more on processing uh, uh, mathematics, objective reality, uh, and so on and so on. 
and and the and then the other one is is uh, is better at processing and language, emotion, uh, and so on. So uh, the uh, um, yeah. So uh, this book, this book's value and the this professor's value through this book was greatly, immensely, and forever, I can argue, uh, was value added, was raised dozens and dozens of times by uh, and another uh, professor, but also a, 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 a scientist, a chemical, chemical uh, scientist, researcher, an employee of a, uh, a what, A.E. DuPont and the Mures? You know, the big chemical company. It used to be, at one time, the world's largest business, most valuable one. They owned and controlled GM, General Motors, up to the, uh, uh, the end of the 1950s, when the American government forced it to break up. And so, yeah, so he, he started, like I mentioned, Going back to uh, he, he, is, he is Frank R. Wallace. He started I know Publishing Company, and a brand uh, came up with names like Neotech, Neotink, and wrote a 25-part uh, theory called the uh, the, uh, the Grand Cycle. Uh, the 25-part uh, puzzle. Uh, to explain everything in the universe, the essential to, to, to continue and to finish up completely, to finish the lifelong project that Albert Einstein was trying to, to do and never fully finished. And so what is it called again? The grand, the grand final, the grand cycle something like that, of the universe or so on. Uh, anyway, so, and, but just, just to touch on his theory, he posited and he, uh, he articulated incredibly uh, logically, for me at least, and millions of others, that brought his, uh, his direct, true to his, uh, you know, his company and his sons and his daughters and so on. Uh, they're, they're based. They're still based, I think, out of uh, uh, near uh, near Las Vegas, Nevada. And you know, he posited that, uh, uh, similar to Ayn Rand, but even much more elaborate and, and with uh, with uh, real scientific proofs, and so on, that. Uh, Black holes, they do not start existence. They can start universes and stuff like that, but all the while inside existence. Where existence exists with an S after the T. Existence always existed, exists now, and it will always exist in the future. It don't need to be an endless. Uh, stack of turtles, infinitely uh, uh, regressing in, in, the, uh, in the past to explain, uh, to try to explain, uh, so to speak, the, the God concept, the beginning of, uh, of everything through an entity called a sky ghost, called God, God or whatever, you know? I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> I don't remember rather, I do know, I don't remember right now, though, where the en English, uh, the endless number of uh, turtles stacked on top of each other to explain something. That, uh, yeah, I do know absolutely uh, why and how, but it doesn't come to my mind right now, because eh? I'm not a computer, eh? but it's in there, it's in my brain. Oh, right. Oh, I don't know about you, but I still have much, much, much more energy this morning. 
to continue chatting with you here, eh? Oh, I'm having so much fun. I don't know about you, but I am. And so, uh, 25 months, 25 uh, minutes here passed. Let's go back a little bit here. So, okay, so, um, so that is a big, big, big uh, part of what I just said that explains absolutely, very thoroughly um, what and why and how uh, I am very happy with uh, where I stand today, with you know, who I am, where I am why I was born, my species, my race, and stuff like that. Oh, yes, it just remind me. There is a big, big, giant component also that I need to add, and this is much more recent. It's from what? Eh, a year ago, just a little bit more of a year ago, a year and a half ago, eh, when I discovered uh, the proprietarian. Uh, literature, articulation, and writing, uh, which is a continuation, eh? Proprietarian as such, you know, was, it's been around for many decades, I think in the 1950s and 60s. Now. No, you know, Kurt Doolittle uh, did not invent it, so to speak. He, he sure did the most, by far. The uh, best use of it, uh, deepest research, articulation, and ex expansion, uh, and uh, popularized it a lot more and made it a lot more legitimate, much more understandable to to uh, the layman. Still, still, but you know, with still a lot, long way to go. Uh, as you, uh, as you remember, if you uh, if you know my, uh, if you know uh, me a, a little bit more. Than not uh, including proprietaries itself when it made its first, you know, its first, you know, significant public appearance, you know, in the flesh with you know, Curdle himself and uh, and other prominent, you know, John Mark and other prominent self leaders and the like uh, in Richmond, Virginia, United States, last year. Oh, it's, what is it? Is this July the fourth? Uh, that was very much uh, as as he articulated recently on Twitter and and because uh, his Twitter feed he he reposts everything if not almost everything on his Telegram channel which you should follow as far as I'm concerned. And it's free. For the, that thistle thing that you know telegram is uh is um, is not free no it is it is absolutely free um, the uh the research the incredible painstakingly difficult long fucking hours weeks years work and a lot of it is a lot of the uh, do little work and, and from others a lot of the proprietarian work it, it it involves a lot of falsifying and, and invalid invalidating of highly mystical notions especially in the social sciences uh, and if I recall correctly uh, Kurt Doolittle has has basically single-handedly, essentially, invalidated and falsified, like utterly and completely, at least two social sciences. Uh, that's absolutely amazing. I forget right right now which one they are exactly, but uh, if Mr. Uh, who say is in many ways much more knowledgeable about proprietarian. Uh, uh, written works, uh, Mr. S if St Steve Pender, uh, 
uh, if I remember correctly from him, if I, 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 heard, I read that he said, he said as, uh, that much, that uh, Doolittle completely, utterly falsified and validated at least two social science. And it was about goddamn time, eh? This, this fucking humanities, humanities that is way overstressed, has been way overstressed by the left academia, uh, has, has been an incredible parasitical part of this society. Which, uh, you know, which is part and parcel a lot of the, part of a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, cultural, uh, cultural Marxism, Marxism in basically all universities. Um, so again, so that's uh, neotech, neotank, then proprietarianism. Um, okay, proprietarianism is more recent. Neotechism at the beginning of my journey. Uh, after I escaped my family and the, and the cult I was born into. And yes, my family, my parents, uh, and all, every single one of them, all the adults in my childhood were very less, very less than, than optimal, than ideal. They were less than mediocre in everything, fuck. Most of all, my father. Um, my parents. In hindsight, my mother was very much a rabid feminist. In hindsight, I just fully realized this, this just just during these past what five, ten years max. Um, but she, 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 she uh, consciously. Did not call herself feminist. She, she didn't. I, I don't think she was even aware of it. And this is like in the late seventies, eighties, and so on. Um, even back then, it just shows to. It just goes to show to what extent, what great fucking extent, um, feminism has been around and has become. I. Uh, I argue, it has become a genetic component, not just an epigenetic component of women first, and then secondary uh, to, and, and then in men too. Yes, because there are feminist men out there. Oh, fuck yeah, man, there are. So, yeah, and so, my, my mother was the, very much, most of the time, the man of the house. Oh, fuck yeah. Including, including the man of the house with the, uh, the finance. Where the money would go that the father, my father made. My mother, next to nothing, she made a few. A few hundred dollars here and there to, uh, over the years to, uh, to uh, very unsuccessful low level uh, uh, what, uh, what Amway and Tupperware uh, products and stuff like that. But when, she, but then, but when she voluntarily, because I really think it's mostly voluntary, when she voluntarily let herself go, when she became morbidly obese, that is when really it started to uh, unravel, and and she very much destroyed her life much more rapidly than not than necessary. Anyway, so profit, uh, new tech first, and so before profit. Proctarian, I've discovered objectivism through uh, and deeply objectivism. I mean, not just uh, Ayn Rand's version, so to speak, but from uh, several others. Uh, Harry Binks, Bing Swagger, and of course, the Leonard Peikoff and the Omnis Parallels. 
which uh, in hindsight, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, this will be a topic for another day, but the ominous parallels, quite, quite the fraud, quite, quite a bunch of lies, largely uh, made up in there. Protect the fucking Jews, the elite Jews, the cabal, eh? One of the greatest, if not the largest, most destructive lies in all of man's history, as far as I'm concerned. Eh? The, the, the JQ question, eh? The Jewish question. So, yeah, so neotech, objectivism. Uh, and... I would add maybe uh, as, as a minor, a third one before a proper third, uh, secular humanism, uh, I would say, yeah, so, so basically four, four philosophies, four movements uh, that they greatly influence my thinking, my person, my psychology. Um, to very recently, uh, still a, uh, about a year ago, just, just a, even even a little bit more recent than proprietarianism. This uh, I wouldn't say it's it's a, a philosophy, a system, stuff like that. As such, uh, I would call it more of a a uh, a. Uh, A, 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 uh, a bunch of systems within a system, if you will. Uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, well, that includes uh, several different strategies uh, that are quite contextual, deep, very, very much conditioned on the, the target that one wants to fight back, defend from. And ultimately attack, and that is uh, James Santagata's psychology is the weapon, business is the battlefield. Modal slogan that encompasses many, many others that uh, he has come up, popularized, and and this very much is. Uh, what is missing as a uh, like so, so so to speak a, uh, a Warhammer 40k so to speak attack mode and a defensive mode also um, like on top and or integrated with proprietarianism because uh, proprietarianism as, as they proved very much so July 4th last year in Richmond Virginia USA yeah. Yes, Doolittle did not pee himself, uh, and so on. But uh, that's the part. That's beside the point. So what if he didn't pee himself? Uh, it took me a long time to, you know, to really appreciate the power of psychology and, and uh, public and the psychological optics of it all. The point is that well, it's, it looks really bad visually, psychologically, emotionally. But most people didn't, don't care if it's true or not. Why? That's all wet in his crotch area. Yeah, ultimately, most people don't give a shit. It just is. It just seems to be. So it doesn't matter. So that is why very much um, the holding on to um, you know, truth is everything. Truth will save us in all contexts and stuff like that. It is bullshit. It has, a, it has, it has been a very hard pill for me to swallow this notion that you know, no, uh, uh, that uh, the falseness of saying of oh, truth is enough, which was very much promulgated and written massively about in proprietarian literature itself. Oh, truth is enough. Truth is enough. In quotation. Well, fuck no, it's not enough. In the context of actually winning, surviving long term, the culture, culture wars. Fuck no, it's not enough. Fuck no. And much more than that, it's it's oftentimes the greatest liability. Okay? Because as, as Santa Gata articulates, it shows, it exposes 
you expose and, and you, you show yourself too much of your vulnerabilities, uh, your, your, your qualities and, and your weaknesses to the, to the target, to the enemy, to the, per, to the person, the institutions, the, the movement uh, that you're fighting against. Eh? So how about that? Eh? And of course, you know, I know this incredibly, it's a massive amount of, of, uh, of bickering, conflict, and uh, name calling between various fa fractions, uh, factions of uh, white nationalist, proletarian, uh, Nazi supporters, fans, and stuff like that, all among themselves, and also between, you know. Uh, Santa Gala and and uh, and not so much Julio, no, uh, more with John Mark, but much more with uh, uh, the, the red unquestioning. And I used to be one of those. Um, hold on here.